why you should not move. Now, can you move during your MRI? You have always heard that you can't, right? And that is true, okay? You can't, you, but you know, in all terms, you, you, you can move if you wanted to, um, but you shouldn't, okay? And I'm gonna explain to you in simple words why you should not move, okay? So this is a video about a cervical MRI and why you shouldn't move, okay? Uh, this is not about what to expect during your cervical MRI. This is just what you are going to see from your doctor and what we look at as technologists to, you, uh, to do your images, okay? So this is a cervical MRI and what is causing the pain, okay? So the first we, uh, first thing we have to do is acquire some simple images, okay? Uh, we're gonna do a coronal, we're gonna do a sagittal, and we're gonna do an axial, okay? So the coronal images look like this, all right? Uh, very uh, low quality images to get an idea of what we're going to be looking at for the next set of images, okay? Uh, so we have here what is called the coronals. We know that because we're facing the patient, okay? And we're splitting the patient in an anterior position and uh, uh, a back position, as a posterior position, okay? So if we did a, 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 a mid-coronal uh, slice of the patient, we end up with something like this, okay? So this is the lung fields, right and left, because we're facing the patient, okay? So your right is my left. Uh, so this is the lung fields. This is the uh, T1, thoracic one. And then this one here is the den. So I know this is C2 or cervical two, okay? So we need this, okay, in order to get our sagittal images. Um, if we go down, we're gonna get a three uh, plane uh, series of, or, or sequence, uh, all included in the scout. And we're gonna go to our second image. Low quality again, but this is going to be the sagittal, okay? Uh, and this is the mid-sagittal, which is like right in the middle of a, of a person's right to left. And we know that because we can see C2, cervical two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then some of the thoracic ones. We see the spines, okay with the spinous process of the cervical and then we can see the spinal cord all throughout the spine okay cervical and some of the thoracic all right this is the patient's tongue so the patient is facing that way okay right and left and then we also get an axial all right this is also important now we're looking at the patient from top to bottom or we're slicing the patient uh, from top to bottom, or another way to look at it is um, superior and inferior, okay? So again, we have the coronals, we have the sagittals, and we have the um, axials. We have about maybe seven to five uh, images of each, okay? But we just got to we have to choose the best one. So this would be the sagittal one because it's in the middle. Uh, we uh, we have the coronal, we can see all throughout the spine. And this one, as long as you can see one, okay? And we can run up and down in the images, see if they have rotations, but this is good enough, okay? Now the first one we're gonna go for is the sagittal, right? We're gonna put the slices so notice we have one to three, all right? On the coronal view, because we're going to slice the patient sagittally, okay? Now each one here, all right, each line is a slice, all right? So we have 13 from left to right. Now some, you know, different offices have from right to left, it doesn't matter as long as you have 
enough to cover from side to side, okay? Now, if your cervical pain, um, it says you're, you're having uh, headaches, uh, dizziness, uh, you have tingling, uh, numbness in your hands or, or upper extremities, right? Shoulder pain, right shoulder, left, it doesn't matter. Your doctor is, wanna, is going to want to take a look at your cervical and he or she is going to order a cervical MRI to see what's going on because this is the root of that problem, all right? So once we get this, we have sagittal slices on our coronals. We also have to make sure that it's straight enough on our axials, okay? So when we go to our axials, you can see that it's straight enough, okay? This time it could have been a little bit, you know, we move this, we angulate, we turn a little bit. We could have made that way better, but is good enough for what we're looking at, all right? And this is the same thing. This is an axial image from top to bottom, and we're gonna slice the patient from left to right, okay? So, and also this band here, I'm gonna show you in a minute, will suppress most of the breathing artifact, okay? Artifact is something we don't want in an image. So this is gonna suppress much of that and also it's gonna suppress the beating of the heart, okay? So the heart beats. Uh, we're not gonna let that go into the image and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so once we plan on our axials and coronals, okay, we're gonna end up some, with something like this. Now this here is the sagittal scout image, okay? So the low quality. Uh, but this is just a square of what it's going to look like, okay? So we square it up, all right? We put our sat band here, in, just that right in the middle of the trachea, so that when you breathe in and out for about 15 minutes, right? N none of that is gonna really affect the image, okay? Or it shouldn't if you're breathing uh, normally. Now, if you're breathing heavier, uh, they may cause some problems and we may tell you to uh, breathe easy, okay? Uh, let's see if I'm missing anything here, okay. So once we have that, we get this uh, T1 image, okay? This is a T1 image. And notice on this one, this is where the sad bed is to be, okay? All right, and it's completely dark, okay? Because we have suppressed all of that so that it doesn't go in, into our image, okay? So this is a T1 image that we're looking at, okay? And we have this as a result of planning this, same here, and this is what it's going to end up looking like as a T1, all right? So I also take, you know, like the start with the T2, okay? Now this T2 is the same one as this one, it's just without the cuts, okay? I didn't wanna, or actually, no, this one, all right? This is the cuts, all right? This is the slices because this is going to get us to the axial images, okay? Now this is a good quality T2 images. These are the actual images we're looking at, okay? We have 13 sagittals, okay? Um, so if we go back to this one, is a T1, and then we get a T2, or T2 and then T1, it doesn't really matter. So once we get to them, right, we are going to plan, and, and again, doesn't matter, from one to 30. So 30 cuts or 30 slices uh, from superior to inferior or vice versa, it doesn't matter, okay? Now, this is just an illustration without the slices because I want you to look at something, okay? Now, this patient is having uh, cervical pain and extremity pain, okay? So, it radiates 
two extremities, upper extremities. Um, and this is most likely what is causing his problem. If we take a look at this, right in the middle there, all right, this little thing here is a bulging disc, okay? Now you can see the black in the middle, that's a spinal cord. We can see white in front and we can see white in back, okay? But as you get closer to here, you see that white starting to disappear until it disappears com completely here. And you have no more white until you go all the way to the to the bottom of the skull or, or top of the cervical, whichever you, the way you want to look at it. All right. But this right here is really what's causing the thing. All right. That little bulging disc. Uh, and he's, you know, got a lot more here and here. All right. But it's not as bad as this one. OK. Now, this here being the number two, uh, because we count, we don't have a, a first one. OK. This will be the first one here, but we don't have a disc there. So we count two, three, four. That will be the fourth five, six, and seven, all right? So that's why it's covering from here all the way to here. We don't want to see the bone. We just want to see the discs in the back and in the front. That's why this is, you know, can't be any closer, all right? And we also take a look at the back, okay? So that's the sagittal or the uh, axial planning on a sagittal image, okay? Now, this is the same thing with the cuts being there, okay? So we wanna make sure, at least with this one, that we have one slice right in the bulging disc, okay? Because we wanna make sure that the doctor um, has enough information on that bulging disc, okay? You don't wanna make one cut in the, like a free, you know, space there and not being, not being able to get the, the bulging disc, okay? So you wanna make sure it's covered. Um, so if we go back here, we have to use this uh, coronal to make sure that we turn it the right way. That way, each slice is going through, all right, the correct angulation of the cervical discs. Otherwise, you end up with something like this instead of just straight through the cervical disc. Okay, so we have the coronals again, and then we have the sagittals. With those two, the coronals and the sagittals, we plan the axials, all right? And we end up with something like this. Now, it is impossible to know whether that bulging, I, we know it's in the middle now, but does it turn more to the right or to the left? We don't know that until we get to our last one, which is the axial, okay? It looks like it's all the way in the middle, maybe more towards the left, because it's bigger on this side than the right side, okay? We would have to look at all the images to you know completely make sure, but that's why it's so important that we get three planes and we uh, have enough slices to cover all the anatomy possible. Now, this is why you can't move, all right? Or you shouldn't move. And that's because if you did, first of all, you're gonna get blurry images, okay? It's just like taking pictures of kids. They move a lot and it's going to be blurry, okay? Now, the other more important reason is if you did move, the slices that we put there, they're not going to follow you throughout 15 minutes worth of an exam trying to know where you're at, okay? We would have to run another sagittal, which means we go back all the way here to the scalp to see where you have moved to get other sagittals in order to get to this part again. That means you have more study time. And if you're like, oh, you know, I, I feel stressed. I don't like this machine. Uh, I'm uncomfortable. How long is it gonna take? 
or you say five minutes earlier and it's been five minutes now, well, it's gonna be five more minutes if you keep moving, okay? It's because if you keep moving, we can't get the slices to line up correctly with your anatomy. It could be that you did move and it hasn't been that much, but we don't wanna take chances with you, you know? So make sure that you don't move during your exam because it is going to affect your final results, okay? Um, so that's why we are always asking you guys, the patients, you want to stay very still because the slices we plan for your body part will not follow you, okay? This is not that smart. We got to put it in uh, manually for your specific needs, okay? So if you moved up or to the right or to the left, we won't know that until we get the last image and now you're like all the way to the right instead of just being in the middle. That was all on you, okay? So back again, this is exactly what's causing the patient's pain. It's just that bulging disc all throughout two, three, and four, all right? so two, three, and four, right here. Uh, but mainly this one, okay? All right. I hope you have enjoyed this explanation of how, what we do to make good images and why you shouldn't be able to move or you shouldn't want to move to uh, during your exam, okay? All right. I'll keep posting videos. Make sure you subscribe like and share. Good night.